In this video, you'll learn how to grow your Beehive publication with Boost. Boost allow you to grow your audience by paying other Beehive publishers for every verified subscriber they refer to you. Currently, there are three different ways you can grow with Boost. The first way is through a web boost, which is a sponsored recommendation that shows up after a new subscriber signs up to a publication. The second way is through an email boost, which is a sponsored recommendation block other publications can include in their emails. And lastly, a boost direct link, which is a link to your publication that other publications can share on social media and wherever they'd like. Let's get straight into it. To get started, log into your Beehive account and go to grow and boost. From here, click on add funds in the top right corner of your screen to fund your wallet. Once you do this, you'll be redirected to Stripe where you'll be prompted to enter how much you want to deposit. Once you've added funds, you'll now see the number reflected at the top of your Boost dashboard under my available balance. You can now use these funds to pay other publications to boost your publication. Now you can create a Boost offer. This will allow you to create an offer other publications can apply for in the Boost marketplace. You can find this marketplace under Monetize and Boost and Boost Marketplace. To get started, click on New Offer and you'll see a form appear where you can start creating your offer. The first step is setting your cost per acquisition or CPA. This is the amount you'll pay for every verified subscriber a publication refers to you. And next, you can set a target audience. This text will be displayed on your offer in the Boost Marketplace and can help other publications understand who your audience is. Crafting an accurate target audience can help the ideal publications apply to your offer. You'll be able to preview how your offer will look like in the Boost Marketplace on the right-hand side. Once you're done with step one, click on continue. Under step two, you can now set your verification mode. This allows you to choose how strict of a verification process you wanna implement. For example, standard verification, which is recommended by the way, can take anywhere from 10 to 17 days to determine if the subscribers you're paying for are legitimate. On the other hand, the relaxed verification process can take as little as two days. It's important to note that you will not be paying for any subscribers that do not pass the verification process. This means if a publication refers you 1,000 subscribers, but only 100 pass the verification process, you will not be paying for 1,000 subscribers. Instead, you'll be paying for the 100 verified subscribers. Speaking of this, you can also toggle on auto clean boost verification denied subscribers to automatically remove the subscribers who did not pass their verification process from your subscriber list. This is generally recommended for list hygiene and maintaining a good sender reputation. And lastly, you can set a geolocation criteria. This allows you to only pay for subscribers that are from countries that you specify. It would make sense to toggle this on if your publication's content is only targeted at specific countries or regions. If you don't select a country under geolocation criteria, this means you're okay paying for subscribers from any country. Once you're done with this step, hit continue. The last option you'll see is allow email boost. As explained before, email boosts are sponsored recommendation blocks other publications can include in their emails. Unlike web boosts, which are shown to new subscribers of a publication, email boosts are shown to a publication's existing subscriber base. Here, you can set a max spend, which is essentially the maximum amount you'll ever pay for a single email boost. For example, if you set your max spend to $200 and your cost per subscriber is set to $2, if a publication sends an email with your email boost included in it, the maximum you'll pay is $200 or essentially 100 verified subscribers. If a publication ends up referring 200, 300, 400, 1000 verified subscribers, you won't pay for the extra subscribers. This is because your max spend was set to $200. It's important to know that not every publication can send an email boost to promote your newsletter anytime they want. Publications who are boosting you and want to boost you in an email must apply separately every time they want to send out an email boost. This means you have to approve an email boost application. Whereas web boosts will show on a publication's website indefinitely until you or the publication who's boosting you turns it off. When you do approve an email boost application, the max bed amount will get pulled into escrow. Then the publication you approved for the email boost will have 72 hours to send an email containing the email boost, promoting your newsletter. If they don't end up sending the email boost within 72 hours, you'll get all your money back from escrow. If they do end up sending the email boost, any extra funds that were not spent will be returned to you after 72 hours. Once you're done setting everything up, click on create. Now that you have a live offer, you'll see it at the top of the overview tab 
of your Boost dashboard. Here, you'll also see a full list of the publications that are boosting you, their CPA, open rate, and acceptance rate, or in other words, what percentage of subscribers they refer to you that pass the verification process. You also see the pending subscribers, verified subscribers, and total subscribers. Pending subscribers are subscribers that have not yet been verified and are going through the verification process. While verified subscribers are subscribers that have successfully been verified and paid for. And total subscribers is the total number of subscribers a publication has driven you, which includes both non-verified and verified subscribers. Similarly, pending spend is not necessarily how much you spent, it's just how much money is currently pending or on hold while we verify if the subscribers that are referred to you are legitimate or not. Assuming not every subscriber will be deemed legitimate, your actual spend will be lower than your pending spend. You can pause a boost at any time by clicking on the three dots icon or even report a publication if you suspect they're driving illegitimate subscribers. Assuming you just created your offer, you probably don't have publications boosting you right away. To speed up the process, you can click on invite publication to boost to find publishers who might be a good fit for you. When a publication eventually applies to your offer through the Boost Marketplace, you'll see an application appear under the Applications tab. Here you'll see information about the publication that wants to boost you, including what type of content they create, when they started their publication, how many posts they've published, where their audience is from, how big of a publication they are, how fast they're growing, their engagement level, and their boost quality. You can even click on an individual offer to view more details, including viewing their live site. This can help you gauge whether or not a publication is the right fit for your audience. Additionally, you'll see a tab for email applications. Essentially, if you toggle on the email boost option in your offer, any publication who has been accepted to boost you will have the option to apply to send an email boost. These applications will show up here. If you wanna automate the process of accepting and denying applications, you can toggle on auto accept which allows you to automatically accept applications based on a specific criteria. For example, you can auto accept publications that are in a specific niche and have a specific engagement level. Additionally, you can filter and sort the list of applications to help speed up the process. Similarly, in the overview tab, you can also auto pause, which allows you to automatically pause any boosts that go below a specific open rate threshold. In the insights tab, You'll see a chart breaking down to the subscribers you gain through boosts, the top publication driving your subscribers, your total spend, and your highest paid partner. Lastly, in the offer history tab, you can disable, archive, or edit an offer at any time. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to check out the boost playlist on our YouTube channel.